asking uh, that you would give up something for the duration of the fast. Now, I know 21 days sounds like a long time, but once you kind of get in the groove of it, it'll go rather quickly. And what we're wanting to do is just, we're wanting you to give up something. If it's television, the computer, the internet, uh, your phone, uh, Facebook, soda, uh, sweets, to give up something for the entire duration of the fast and then not only that, but to fast at least, everybody say at least, at least one meal a day for the duration of the fast. And uh, I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to plead with you. Uh, I thought I would get a little notebook out and make uh, little lines and all that. And the Lord said, no, let me speak to their heart about it. So that's, that's the way we're going to do it. I'm going to offer it to you. I'm going to tell you that we're doing it. And you can either come on board and, and, and be a part of what God is doing. Come on, somebody. Or you can just choose not to. I, I, I've been praying about the fast this past week. Kind of sounds funny, praying about the fast. But I was praying and asking the Lord what, uh, exactly what he wanted me to give up and so on and so forth. And I, as I was doing that, the Lord began to place some things in my spirit about this fast. And he said, this fast is the most important fast I have ever called you to. How many feel that? I feel that about this fast. I feel that about this year. And I just feel that if we get this right, and I, and I shared this with Brother Tom, Pastor Tom, I said, if we get this right, then the rest of the year will follow suit. Amen? But we've got to get this right. Look at your neighbor and say, we've got to get this right. And so uh, I just believe it's the most important fast up to this time in our lives. And I know that's a mouthful, but I know that's what God has shared with me. And uh, next Sunday morning, we will be bringing a message entitled, The Power of the Fast. The Power of the Fast. And so I, I pray that you would be praying for me as we prepare that message for next week. But here today, we are starting our new sermon series entitled, Forward Momentum 2015. Everybody say, Forward Momentum. Forward Momentum 2015. How many understand that we have come way too far to turn back now? Amen. Now, I'm not even for sure exactly how many messages there will be in this particular series, uh, but I know there will be uh, a few, and uh, we're just going to keep going with it until the Lord says we're done. How many think that's all right? And so it will be at least for the whole month of January, maybe into, some, into February some. But turn with me, if you would please, this morning to the book of Joshua, the third chapter, Joshua chapter 3, and there we will find our opening text this morning. Uh, I took a step of faith this morning, and I didn't bring my glasses. No, actually, I forgot them. And so I, did, I, I don't have my glasses or my reading glasses, so we're going to read by faith this morning. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1, and Joshua rose early. Everybody say early. In fact, underline that word in your Bible. Joshua rose early. How many understand that the early bird gets the worm? How many understand you can't be the leader of God that God has called you to be if you're going to be lazy? Come on, I'm preaching better already than you're shouting this morning. Come on. And Joshua rose early in the morning. And they removed from Shidem and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass. Everybody say, say, and it came to pass. And it came to pass, watch this now, after three days. Everybody say, after three days. In other words, there's an order of sequence here. And what we'll see is God's divine order throughout this. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people. Everybody say, they commanded the people. They didn't suggest, they didn't just give them a, a couple good ideas or some options, but they commanded the people saying, when, everybody say when. In fact, underline that word in your Bible, when. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing, bearing it, then, everybody say then. In other words, not until then. Then you shall remove from your place and what? Somebody shout, go after it. Go after it. Verse 4, yes, there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000, how many, I, I got to stop right there. I was just going to blow right past that, but I can't. How many understand 
If you're going to get what you need from God in this year of 2015, you're going to have to go after it. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the the violent take it by force. You're going to have to go after it. Verse 4, yet there shall be a space. Now watch this. There shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near it unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. And Lord, we ask you to bless the reading of your word this morning. Bless it unto our ears that we may hear and bless it unto our heart that we may receive it. Father, we thank you for this brand new year that you've given us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence, your power, your anointing that we've already felt in this house this morning. Lord, we just look forward with eager expectation and a holy anticipation of what you have in store for us. And Lord, help us to lock up like Pastor Josh said. Lord, help us to come into connection with the vision of this house and the vision of what you have for your church to do. And Lord, make your word alive to us this morning. Father, we give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen Amen. and amen. We find here in verse number four that God has given Joshua instructions and he in turn gives instructions to the people. Hear me now. God gives Joshua instructions and Joshua in turns gives instructions to the people. Now, how many understand that as leaders, unless God gives us something, then we have nothing to offer you? Hello? It was even the great apostle Paul that said, the only thing that I have to preach unto you is Christ and him crucified. Even Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only speak what I hear the Father speak. So Joshua received instruction from the Lord and he in turn gave instruction to the people. And that's why I shared what I shared with you earlier about the fast and the praying and seeking God. It's like, okay, Lord, what would you have me to fast? What would you have me to do? What would you have me to give up? And speaking of that tonight, we're not going to have any kind of service. We're just, the doors will be open to the church and you can come and pray and come and go as you want. You see, we've talked about it for so long. We've preached about it for so long, but how many know it's time to start doing it? We can come here and we can come here six or seven times a week and talk about it and preach about it, but how many understand it's time to start doing it? Doing it. So tonight, on this first day of the fast, we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying. That's the instruction the Lord has given me. Joshua received instruction from the Lord, and he in turn gave instruction to the people. Look at this in verse 4. Here it is, Joshua 3 and 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits, which in our measurement is a distance of 2,953 feet, or approximately half a mile. About 2,000 cubits by measure, and come not near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. Now, oftentimes in the spirit-filled realm, as spirit-filled believers, we talk about the fact that we walk by faith and not by sight, which is true. Everybody say, that's true. But how many understand, if we don't know where we're going, then we're not going to get there. How many understand you're not going to arrive at your divine destiny in God by accident, by happen chance. Now, I will say this. Oftentimes, God only lets us know on a need-to-know basis, but I don't think there is anything, and I've said it. Lord, forgive me. I don't think there any is such a thing as blind faith. Uh-uh. Because God directs our paths. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, God has direction for your life in this new year. Now, let me explain what this phrase right here means. Joshua said, come not near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. 
And that's old King James terminology. Come not near it that you may know the way by which you must go. In other words, don't get too close. But stay back so you can see the whole picture and take in what's going on. Amen? Let me give you an example here. How many have ever been following someone on the highway and all of a sudden they changed lanes or they took the off ramp? And because you were following them too closely, you missed it. Anybody been there? Done that? You're following somebody really closely and all of a sudden they change lanes or they take the off ramp and you couldn't react fast enough. How many have ever... You been there and done that? It's because you were following them too closely. And that is exactly what Joshua was saying here. Come not near it that you may know... Everybody say no. That you may know the way by which you must go. Now listen. I'm hearing all the things that you're hearing. And I'm in agreement with it about this year 2015. Abundance, more than enough. The glory, revival, sovereign moves of God. I believe it. I receive it in Jesus' name. But listen, if we don't know where God is trying to take us, how are we going to get there? Hello? Come not near it that you may know the way by which you must go. I believe there's some things God wants us to know about this new year. And he will reveal them to us if we take the time to listen. If we take the time to fast and pray. Come on, somebody. When you see the priest move, go after it. But in other words, don't move until God moves. Oh, you just missed it. Come on. I said, don't move until God moves. I am convinced this morning that there are some folk in this house. There's some people right here in this church that are faced with some pretty important decisions in your life. And I would just say this. Don't move until God tells you to move. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't move until you're sure it's God. And then Joshua finishes verse 4 by saying, for you have not passed this way heretofore. For you have not passed this way heretofore. And what Joshua is simply saying here, he's saying, hey, listen, pay attention. Watch the priest, but don't get too close. Pay attention, watch the priest, because we've never been this way before. Look at your neighbor and say, we've never been this way before. Now, what happens when you go somewhere that you've never been? You have a tendency to get lost. How many have been there and done that? Okay. Now, I'm all for this. I'm all for going gung-ho and going crazy and radical and I don't know all those terms we even use anymore now. For God in 2015. But listen, hear me. We have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because everything that happens or is happening isn't necessarily of God. Or maybe it's of God, but it's not for us. Or maybe it's for us, but maybe it's not his timing yet. Somebody say, Lord, help us to get this. We've never been this way before. In other words, Joshua is saying we've never been closer to the promised land than what we are right now. Ooh, look at your neighbor and say, we've never been this close before. Now, now, this is what the enemy wants us to do. Right at the close of this thing, when we are so close to the prize, when we are so close to the promise, the devil wants to distract us and use anything and everything to get us off track. Your job school, your spouse, I don't care who it is, what it is. The devil will try to use anything and everybody to distract you and get you off course. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stay on course. The title of our message this morning is this, closer than we've ever been before. Closer 
than we've ever been before. Church, can I tell you that as the clock struck midnight, early Thursday morning, and the year 2015 was birthed into existence, we all became one step closer. Now, some people don't like to make a big deal about the new year. They, you know, just, well, it's, it's no big deal. God's not really impressed with our timing and so on and so forth. And to a certain degree, I understand that. But if, if we're not careful, we will miss what God wants to do in our lives. Jared mentioned about it, that the change that God wants to occur. How many understand there's still a change that needs to occur in the lives of God's children? I hate to bust your bubble this morning, but we haven't reached perfection yet, have we? I don't see the dead getting up. I don't see a whole lot of sick folk getting healed. Come on, somebody. I don't see a whole lot of blinded eyes getting open. But yet we are closer now than we've ever been before. Can I tell you that as an individual, you, everybody say me. If you stay steadfast in God in this, near, this new year of 2015, you are closer to your healing, you are closer to your breakthrough, you are closer to your financial miracle. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me preach this morning. You are closer to the salvation of your loved ones. You're closer to the word coming to pass that God has given you. You are closer to the dream being fulfilled. You're closer to the vision coming to fruition. You are closer now than you've ever been before. And don't let the devil lie to you and tell you anything but. Slap somebody high five and tell them I'm closer now than I've ever been. Closer now than I've ever been. Devil should have killed me in 2014 because I made it to 2015. Come on. As the clock struck midnight Thursday morning and the year 2015 came into existence, you and I, listen to this, you and I, the church, we are one year closer to his return. Well, Pastor, are you saying that the Lord could return in 2015? I don't know. He could. He could. Look at your neighbor and say, you better be ready. We are one year closer to his return. You see, we've never been this way before. It's, it's new territory. It's uncharted waters. We are blazing a trail for those following behind us. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout good morning. Good morning. good morning. good morning. Look at your neighbor and tell him good morning. Good morning. You say, Pastor, why are you saying good morning? I'm saying good morning because it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new year. Come on, somebody. Top of the morning to you. It's a new day. Woo. It's a new day. And you see, God loves to make things new. He loves making new things. Don't settle for something old and worn out and used. Don't settle for the mistakes and the failures of 2014. But God has something better for you in 2015. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My goodness. In fact, I believe God has some new things he wants to show us in 2015. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 43. How many understand we haven't seen everything yet? Sometimes as born-again, spirit-filled believers, man, we think we've arrived. We think we've seen it all, heard it all, heard it all done it all. But look at this, Isaiah. Now, now, this is even Old Testament stuff. Wow, think about that. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. The prophet Isaiah, the word of the Lord comes to the prophet Isaiah, and he says, Remember ye not the former, everybody say the former, the former things. Neither consider the things of old. In other words, don't live in the past. Look at your neighbor and say, don't live in the past. I mean, 2014 was great. It was, it was awesome, but we can't live there. Behold, I will do a what? A new thing. Now. Everybody shout now. Now, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. How many need some rivers in your desert this year? Excuse me while I take a praise break because I need some rivers in my desert. Yes. 
God wants to do a new, better, deeper work in each and every one of our lives in this year of 2015. I promise you. I promise you. How many understand for the child of God, the best is always yet to come? Always. Always. You say, well, pastor, how can you say that? You, you, you don't understand. I'm on my deathbed. Well, listen, I really don't care. You can have one foot in the grave and another foot on a banana peeling. But if you're a child of God, that means you're going to heaven and the best is always yet to come. Now, here's the catch. Everybody say, here's the catch. How many know there's always a catch? Always a catch. Here's the catch. The devil is going to lie to you and tell you that nothing has changed. Hello? The devil is going to try and convince you that nothing has changed since 2014. And why would the devil do that? It's because the devil wants to steal and kill your hope for a better tomorrow. You see, the devil doesn't want you to have faith and hope in a better 2015 because he knows how faith works. And, and he knows if he doesn't stop that thing right now, that your faith is liable to activate a supernatural God. And a supernatural God will move on your behalf in 2015. That's why the devil doesn't want you to have any hope for 2015. In fact, how many understand the devil wants you to think that 2015 is going to be worse than 2014? What the devil isn't telling you is that when God makes things new, he always makes them better. I said when God makes things new, he always makes things better. It's not a redo. It's not a reconditioning of. Come on, somebody. It's, it's not a remodel, but it's a brand new species. Come on, somebody. In fact, the reason why the devil tried to kill you in 2014 is because he didn't want you to make it to 2015. The devil knew what God had in store for you this year. I'm about to preach my own self happy this morning. Look what John the Revelator said here in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21 and 5. How many, understand, how many are starting to see it now why the enemy tried to take you out in 14? He didn't want you to make it to 15. Look at this. Revelation 21 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make some things, most things. No, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. <laughs> these words are true and faithful. Isn't it amazing how God, who never changes, loves to change everything else? <laughs> Think about it. The God who never changes takes delight in changing everything else. Why? Because everything, is a, everything else is a mess, but he ain't. Look at your neighbor and say, he ain't. That's bad grammar, I know, but it just, it rolls. <laughs> he isn't. It's amazing how a God who never changes loves making all things new. How many understand God loves making people, places, and things into brand new things? Now you say, I know what you're thinking already. You say, well, Pastor Steve, I just know this person, and they're never going to change. They're never going to change. Well, number one, don't ever underestimate God. Amen. Come on, somebody. I said, don't ever underestimate God. Number two, if they don't change, God will deal with them. Look at your neighbor and say, God's going to deal with them. So don't you worry about it. You put them in the Lord's hands. You do what you got to do, and you let God handle it. Amen? Now, how many understand that you are a product of God's love for newness? Hmm. Probably never heard it like that before. But you are a product of God's love for newness. How many like to get new things? Isn't it fun getting new things and presents, opening up things, and you don't know what it is, and new clothes and 
How about a new car? How many love that new car smell? Ooh. Wow. New things. We all like new things. Where do we get that from? Our Heavenly Father. One of the traits that was passed down to us. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. God loves to make all things new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. That new car smell. Come on, somebody. Man, I smell good this morning. Woo! I'm a new man. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, some things. Most things. No, behold, all things are become new. Woo! Look at your neighbor and say, it's the new me. The new year, the new me. God loves making new things. But not only does he make new, new things. Or not only does he make new things new, but he makes old things new. Let me say that again. He makes old things new. Ooh, look at your neighbor and tell him God wants to make everything about you new again. Your love for him, your health, your strength. Come on, somebody. Not only does he want to restore back to you your first love, but he wants to, he wants to take you to a greater love that you've never, a love that you've never known. <laughs> Ooh, my goodness. God wants to make everything new about us in this year of 2015. Listen to this. A new attitude. How many need an attitude adjustment every once in a while? A new attitude, a new demeanor, a new outlook. And not just new, but better than before. Because how many know some things new aren't, eh. But not just new, but better. Better. Look what Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, 16 and 17. No man puts a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up takes from the garment. And the rent or the tear is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. And I, and I know what some of you senior saints are already thinking. You calling me old. No, I ain't. It's not about, it's not about age. It's all about mentality. It's all about how you perceive and understand and, and what you're open for and what you're open to in this new day. What God, what is God doing today? What is God saying about 2015? Oh, I know how he used to move. And I thank God for how he used to move. But how does God want to move today? What does he want me to learn about today? What does he want to show me about today? Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles what? Break. And the wine runs out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into what? New bottles. And both are preserved. So in other words, even as born-again, spirit-filled believers, we must continue to allow God to make us new. Now let me ask you this. Do you in your own self have the, have the ability to make yourself new? No, we have the ability to make changes and to do better things. But how many know that is a work that only God can do? Now, let me say this. Back in the Garden of Eden, God's original plan for man before sin came in, how many understand that our bodies are created to live forever? We have a supercomputer. We have an energizer bunny that lives inside of us called our heart, a generator. We have a heating system. We have a cooling system. We have a plumbing system. We have it all. I mean, our bodies are self-sufficient. Before sin came in, we were created to live forever. So, now, now we know after the fall and sin came in, we know, we know what happens. But, the same supernatural God that created Adam and Eve in the garden is still the same God whom we serve today. Come on, somebody. And I believe he can make our old feeble bodies new again. Can somebody say amen? 
If that spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, if it dwells in you, it shall what? Quicken or make alive your mortal body. Look at your neighbor and say, get full of the Holy Ghost in this new year. We must continue to allow God to make us new if we want to receive the new thing that he has for us. And this is very important because if we don't allow God to continue his work in our lives, then we will hit a plateau and we'll just level off. And there will be and we'll be content and we'll just come and we'll just have good church and we'll just have good worship and we'll just go out to the world and we'll leave good lives and we will have very minimal effect on our world. Hello? I mean, the choice is ours. What do we want for the new year? You see, a question we could ask ourselves here at the beginning of this new year is this. Where do we go from here? Look at your neighbor and ask him, where do we go from here? I mean, we've had some awesome times. We've had some great services. We've had some great moves of the Holy Spirit. So where do we go from here? Good crowds, you know, attendance is up, giving is up, so on and so forth. Where do we go from here? Well, we could just become complacent and we could just kind of level off or we could go for more. Look at your neighbor and say, or we could go for more. The answer to the question, where do we go from here, is bigger, better, and bolder. Everybody say bigger, better, and bolder. Bigger, better, and bolder. The changeless God in whom we serve is always changing people, places, and things. We've already said that. But you know what God wants from you and I? He wants change that we initiate. The changeless ones, the changeless one wants you and I to take the initiative and to change ourselves. Now, he could do it for us, but then we would be an angel or we would be a robot. But we are a free will moral agent. We have the choice to choose. And God says, change is your choice. Look at your neighbor and tell him, change is your choice. But I will just say this, God hates the status quo. God hates to see us level off. God hates to see us reach a place where we think we've seen it all and heard it all. You say, well, pastor, how do you really know that? Well, doesn't the Bible talk about the fact that God said, I would rather have you hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be lukewarm in this year of 2015. The apostle Paul had, the, had a revelation about this truth and he, he knew what was required of him. Look at this, Philippians chapter 3. Paul knew what this was all about. He had the revelation of this. And I want you to underline some words here. I'm, I'm going to stop and tell you which words to underline. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I, can't, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. Everybody underline that two-word phrase, one thing. How many understand in this new year of 2015, you're going to have to be focused Come on, somebody, you're going to have to be focused. Look at your neighbor, nudge him, say, you're going to have to be focused. Don't lose distraction like you're losing with Pastor Steve right now. Come on. You're going to have to be focused. But this one thing I do, forgetting, underline that word forgetting. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. Everybody say reaching forth. Underline those two words, reaching forth. Reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward. Everybody underline those two words, press toward. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now notice the words that we underlined here. One thing, forgetting, reaching forth, and pressing toward. In other words, if you do one thing in this year of 2015... You need to forget your past. Come on, somebody. You need to reach forward into your future. Come on, somebody. And you need to press towards God like you've never pressed before. How many understand a better future always starts with one day? And one day always begins with one decision. 
How many understand every morning when the alarm clock goes off, you have to make a decision to either get up out of bed or stay in bed? Oh, you say, I don't have a choice. Yeah, you do. Stay in bed. Don't go to work. Don't go to school. The future always starts with one day, and one day always begins with one decision. And that day is today. Everybody say, that day is today. Perhaps we should stop making New Year's resolutions and start making New Year's decisions. Well, I'm going to do this in the new year. I'm going to do that and this and that. Hey, let's just make it simple. One day at a time, one decision at a time. I can't promise you tomorrow, honey. I hope and pray that I'm going to be here next Sunday morning. Good Lord willing, I'll make it. But I tell you what, I don't promise you anything. One day at a time, one decision at a time. Amen? Right there. You see, how you live your life from this day forward is entirely up to you. Everybody say, it's up to me. Oh, I know we blame everybody else. But it's up to me. It's up to you. I would say this. Take time to search deep within you, deep within yourself. Take time to search deep within yourself and begin the process called change. Change. One of the many ways we change is by not living in the past. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't live in the past. Now, not all of our past is bad. How many understand that? How many know sometimes, you know, you, you got those people who live in the past and their past was horrible. And they use that as an excuse. But sometimes we have people who live in the past, the good old days, the glory days, and I did this and I did that. Well, that's great. And we're all thankful that you were able to do that. But how many know you can't stop and live in the past and in glory in the past? Look at your neighbor and tell them this. God wants to know, what have you done for me lately, honey? What have you done for me lately? Don't live in the past. I don't care how good it was or how bad it was. Don't live in the past. Don't let your past keep you from your future. Hello? Don't let your past dictate your future. Come on, somebody. If somebody is constantly reminding you about your past and your past failures, perhaps it's time to move on and rid yourself of their company. Hello? Let me ask you this. Who is the accuser of the brethren? The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. If somebody can't get over your past and just keeps reminding you of your faults and your failures, and I don't know. I'm just saying. Maybe it's time to move on. Don't let your past dictate your future. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say this. Don't even look back to the past. Don't even remember the past. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me. Don't even look back. Look at your neighbor and say, don't even look back. You say, Pastor, you ain't got Bible for that. Yeah, I do. Look at this. Luke 17, 32. Luke 17, 32. Remember Lot's wife. Why do we, re why do we need to remember Lot's wife? What did she do? Oh, she sinned this horrible sin. She did this, oh, she did this crazy thing. No, honey, all she did was. She looked back. She looked back and she lost her life. Wow. My Lord, I could say some things there. I'm going to keep going. Hear me, church, because I love honor and respect our past, our heritage, those who have went before us, but yet we cannot stay there. No matter how good, no matter how bad, we can't live in the past. How many understand it's never going to be like it used to be? I'm sorry, Andy Griffin, Brother Tom, is never going to be the number one show again in America. <laughs> He's a big Andy Griffin fan if you didn't know that. Forty years ago? 50 years ago, yeah, it was the number one show, but it's never going to happen again. Never. The good old days are gone. And we must fight this warfare with a new anointing. 
with a greater anointing. Come on, somebody. We must look ahead. We must look forward. We must see what God is saying in this hour. We must embrace what God is doing right now. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new work. Look at your neighbor and tell him the future starts now. Now listen, I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to hurry. One of the, one of the things the enemy's going to cause you to try to, to do, what the enemy's going to try to get you to do, is procrastinate. Well, this is the beginning of the year. We have the rest of the year. You have the whole year. We can do that later. Look at your neighbor and say, don't fall for that lie. This fast, listen, listen to me, listen to me. If we get this fast right, I promise you, the new, the new year is just going to fall into place. We got to start out. How we want to finish is how we're going to start. Somebody say, Lord, help us. The future starts now. The new thing starts now. And so in this new year of 2015, we've never been here before. We've never came this way before. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new hour. Everything's new. Everything's fresh. What we do is we ready ourselves. We pray. We fast. We seek the face of God. We ask for his direction. We still ourselves. Come on, somebody. Everybody say, we still ourselves. We turn the TV off. Get away from the computer. Push the plate back. Come on, somebody. We still ourselves. We listen for the voice of God and we see where God is taking us. We hear what he is speaking to us. We do everything possible that we know to do. And why is that? It's because God needs his church to be ready. I said God needs his church to be ready. Look at your neighbor and say, God needs you to be ready. The work that he has called us to do in 2015, we must be ready. In closing, we go back to our opening text. Praise team, you can come. Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Look at this. Joshua 3, 5. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Everybody say sanctify yourselves. And I think we all know what that means. We got a clean house. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to get our house in order. Come on. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Why? For tomorrow. Everybody say tomorrow. Tomorrow, not next year. Hello, don't put it off. Don't be a procrastinator. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. How many are ready for God to do wonders among you? How many are ready for God to do wonders in your tomorrow? Come on, somebody. Come on, if you believe that right now, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to begin to thank God. Come on. <laughs> that the changeless one is about to change everything. Come on. Shh. Lift your hands and just begin to thank God right now. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, if you believe that you are closer now than you've ever been before, I want you to, come on, somebody verbalize your praise right now. Somebody lift up your voice. Somebody open your mouth and thank God that he's changing everything about your situation right now. Your home, your family, your marriage, your health, your finances, and not only is he changing it, but he's changing it for the better. Come on. Somebody begin to prophesy to your valley of old dead dry bones. Come on. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, I wish somebody would help me push this morning. I wish somebody would help me push. Come on. I wish somebody would help me pray until something happens. I wish somebody would help me praise until something happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, 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 yeah, na la mano rama na la basi and la yete, yeah, rama na la basi and la bayete, yeah, ando rama eli ando rama rayele eli and la basi and la bayele eli and la bayele. Hallelujah. I want somebody who's desperate to get down here in this altar and just begin to praise God and thank God. 
I wish somebody who was desperate would get down here and begin to pray in tongues with me and believe God and stand in the gap and make up the hedge. I wish somebody would get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 